Uh, today, just as they just as they predicted, <laughs> the weatherman is always wrong. It's freezing cold again. It was up over freezing. Now it's back. Oh my God! It's so cold. Uh, so uh, again, my plan will be not to work on the titanium pipes, and we since it's so cloudy, I can't tell if it's going to rain or not. But most of all, I'll get that wheel the other side sanded. And I looked in my inventory, and I, I'm short of three or four different things, so it's time for a trip to Harbor Freight. And I want to go to Harbor Freight as early in the morning as possible, so I have the whole afternoon to work on that wheel. I'm very excited about getting that wheel where I can see two gold wheels. I can see it in my dream. I want to see it in reality. And sometimes when I plan an early trip to Harbor Freight, by the time I get to Harbor Freight, I need seven more things. Sometimes it's not such a great idea to make a list. Anyway, as always, it's off to Harbor Freight, and there's just no substitute for that. The only substitute for that is checking out a windy video of a ride while you're having your coffee. But today, it'll be Harbor Freight first. I know I showed Karen's flowers from Costa Rica before, but we framed a picture already, and it's now taking its place in the art gallery. Very, very cool. And it's always time for a quick cup of coffee before we head out. This cold weather, that coffee's going to taste great. Now what could be better? A Harbor Freight trip in my new Corvette. It has definitely some nice wheels. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. But, but for us, nice is always more junk from Harbor Freight. It is always something I need. Even when I don't need something, I need it. Harbor Freight. What could be a better way to start the day? Now, this is what I really came for. This is a really good thing, by the way. These will be handy to have for doing these wheel. I, I, had, I was out of stock on these when I did the other wheel. Now, let's see what they are. Six, seven bucks. These are really handy. So I also picked up from Harbor Freight something that might be really useful. At the very end of this job, we go to put the bike back together. An ultra-fine polishing pad and some more sanding stuff. Oh, and these, this is the main thing. These we're going to get to use on a wheel, I'm sure. Anyway, just another beautiful day driving my Corvette to Harbor Freight. So this is our haul from the Harbor Freight trip, and this was something that uh, I didn't notice that they even carried. Maybe it's new. It's an ultra-fine foam polishing pad right at the right time when we're going to do the absolute final polishing and buffing and whatever before we assemble a motorcycle. So what I'm going to do is just hang on to this for the very last pre-assembly part of the project. But I've, I, the ones they used to carry, they had three but not the ultra foam. This is the, the ultra fine foam. We'll see if it works. What I usually do is test it on a part that I don't really care if it doesn't come out the way I want because then I could just go back and switch it, but we'll give it a try. This was about eight bucks in Harbor Freight. So the, the thing I wanted to show here, of course we've been using a palm sander and unfortunately for me, I ran out of sandpaper. And so what I was doing was, and it's a funny thing, well, I'll show it when we actually get to do it in real life. I wanted to put this back into my, I call it my stash, lack of a better word. Let's, let me show what I do. I always keep it in a bucket, and I keep the used ones in a bucket, because the used ones, say for this one, if I want to get in some corner or edge or angle or something, I can always use these, and they get, there's always some part of it that's usable. So, or in my case, when I'm dumb enough to run out of inventory, at least I have something I can use. Now this was a thing, and unfortunately, I hate to always admit these kind of things, but as you probably know, old people forget things. Eh? I'm old and I forget things. So what this is, these are about six bucks, six or seven bucks. And these are the really, really super handy. I'm gonna put one in inventory so that I don't run out. That's the biggest thing. The inventory is always good. We'll just forget about that. What it is, I want to show this up close. This is really something that you can use. You can use it for other stuff besides what we're doing here. 
So what I want to show is this comes with a mandrel and it's got kind of threads on one end and what you do is you take one of these rolled up pieces of sandpaper and at one point in time I used to make these myself similar to this anyway and I always found out yeah, it's just better to bite them. I was spending so much time and it's, it's really for six bucks you can do a couple of wheels there's enough of them. Now the ones that are the same taper on both sides these are real handy because you can reverse them. The big ones these are these are made to get down into little nooks and grooves and crannies where you can't sand conveniently and when of course when it wears out you just go put another one on and you're back in business. Now when we originally did this wheel I could have used it to do a lot of this. I did it by hand of course and a lot of this, the, the little radiuses and stuff are very easy. But now that I have that, that'll just make the job go a little bit quicker. And maybe a little bit nicer. And usually I'm pretty good about inventory and stuff and not running out. But in this case, this little, these little things could have made my life a lot easier. Well, now we're going to get to show them in real time and show how handy it can be. A little $6 tool. Now where these are really handy, these little, I don't know what to call them, sanding cones. Little spots like this that you can get right in there. Anytime I can add a tool to my inventory for $6, I'm on board. does a really nice job of getting in and now where it's going to be good is to get this radius anything that's a radius up around here a radius these are all places even though this is not one we're really going to see I'm looking for uh, well I want a radius off this edge I don't want to have a sharp edge because that's where the paint would tend to crack that is so far paid for the trip to Harbor Freight the amount of detailing I can do with the wheel for six dollars. Now one of the things that can be a little bit of a pain working with this when you want to do certain areas like up here. I don't want the wheel to spin. Of course if you have that that real reliable friend that's available at all times you're going to come and have them hold the wheel but in this case just having some spare tires around this allows me And what it means is when I go to do the other side of this, the, the, the I haven't started the other side yet, it should go a lot quicker than yesterday where I did everything, basically did everything by hand. And even, even with these kind of tools, they help, but in the end, you still have to do that whole thing, go over the whole thing by hand with 600 paper if you want the primer to, to lay down right. But this certainly does make it a lot easier. And I can, just by having it that holds it there. See, a lot of times, it's like a machine shop. You know, you want to do something, but you got to be able to hold the part. Well, a lot of times, it's just like this, too. Having a tool like this, if you don't have a helper, I try to do everything in the shop as if I don't have a helper because I don't have a helper. It's an easy decision. Karen really doesn't like coming down here when I'm grinding and painting and if, when I'm when I'm doing something on YouTube, that's different. But she just, this is not her favorite thing. So for sure, this will make absolutely for sure. This will make doing it the the other side easier quicker and if all if if the weather holds up we may even get this in prime today now again this is where the tire can be handy 
I like to have it in this kind of an angle so I can grind away in there and the tire because it's rubber it kind of holds it in position when you try to sand in here and of course we have to finish everything by hand this is just roughly to get get that powder coating which is this seems like this sanding tool takes the powder coating off pretty good so we just want to get that rough then of course this part here which is already smooth the rest of this I'll do all of that by hand and when that's done we'll have the one side of the wheel completely finished Now certain parts of it are always easier to do laying flat on a table or certain parts of it are easier if you put it in the tire and by the way that is a great tip that is a tip worth its weight in gold when you when you start to actually do one of these you'll see the merit of having it that way and of course i would think it's very difficult to paint a wheel without having one of these wheel balances and again thank you pokey for your contribution so here's the here's the real deal there's certain parts of this that and this is just the rough part of it the final sanding is not even started yet that i want it i always try to do one side first i don't know why maybe because i'm just crazy though so now this part here is relatively smooth i want to just etch the powder coating and this is this is pretty much ready for the smooth sanding but to get everything etched it's really not necessary to take off all of it but it is necessary to get it smooth because we're going to use i'm going to try using a self-etching primer just for my own information because an awful lot of this is coming out of aluminum i did the i did the seal of primer on the the first wheel i'm going to see if the self-etching primer works better on this wheel now for this part i'm just taking a little piece of 220 because i know i don't really have to smooth it out that much but and i'll just do this part and then i'm going to take the sanding stick and go around this whole thing again with some 600 paper try to get well get it as nice as i can before the prime and it isn't raining yet but it's supposed to rain today so we're going to try to hope of course we always hope the big hope is we'll get the primer on today let it dry overnight that'll be wonderful and it'll be interesting to see if the self-etching primer is going to lay down any better we really didn't have any problem with the the other one but this way i'll have the knowledge of and i like first-hand knowledge not believing in my pillow ads but i really just don't want to have any shiny spot on this if i can get it especially in the valleys that there's no shiny spot and especially up around here this is going to take quite a bit of time to get this the way i want it just going to be time consuming that's all it's a good time to be thinking about that next cup of coffee. Now that pretty much covers getting that one side of the wheel etched, roughed up, ready. And now, of course, there's the whole other side. So we just got to repeat everything we did yesterday and everything we did today, and it'll be ready for primer. Now we get a break on this side because there's only one little thing has to be ground away that arrow that'll make that go a little quicker but i do want to get rid of this lettering i know you don't see it but i want to get rid of that so i'm evaluating how i want this to all play out but after i have another cup of coffee it'll all look like it's going to be a lot easier when you have a big dirty job to do there's nothing better than an extra cup of coffee and I'm being a generous guy today because I'm in a good mood. I'll give the birds some extra seeds. Usually I feed them twice a day. Today they'll get fed 42 times. Now it always seems like, for whatever reason, the second side goes a little quicker, but, but it still doesn't go that quick. The next thing is using a Dremel tool, I'm going to grind that out and then with that sandpaper, rolled up sandpaper, try to get in there and smooth that all out. This is the only one on this side of the wheel, so this is a little bit of a saving.
And our next step on the wheel is going to be our removing this lettering. With uh, We have a tool for that. I just don't want it there. I know I'm fussy. got to do is the other three and we're ready to move on starting to get exciting So this is pretty good while uh, I'm grinding away at the wheel and having coffee. Miles is, we saw a video of Miles at his tennis lesson. He takes a tennis lesson every week. He's a lot better than I am, that's for sure. Now the final step is just to go over the whole wheel with some 600. Make sure there are absolutely no shiny spots. We'll prep all the wheel down carefully, blow all the dust off outside, and we're pretty much ready for primer. And Karen had just told me, and uh, by the way, Miles is really enjoying that tennis lesson. I'm surprised, because I, I was really bad at tennis. Really bad. No track days at tennis. But anyway, once I get all, all this final sanded, I'll be really excited about getting some primer on this today. Here we blew all the dust off with 125 pounds of air and now it's just a question we'll bring it back inside prep wall it and we'll be ready for primer. Prep walling it down I want to be sure I don't leave any fingerprints I've blown off all the dust I want to carefully do this because what's going to come off of course is that dust from from sanding the powder coating. Now because I've tried this is the first wheel that's really been powder coated that I've had to do this to. Uh, the first time I did the prime, I decided I would use the, the primer sealer. Well, this time I want to try the self etching primer. And I'm thinking, I don't, I think it's six of one, half a dozen of another. I don't think it's really going to be critical because half of this wheel is not exposed aluminum. And by the way, one of the things you would never want to do, especially with steel, is sand something down and then put it out in a damp garage for a week before you paint it because for sure it's going to start to oxidize so it's to your favor to absolutely as quick as possible when you sand anything anything metal get the primer on as soon as possible if it's metal self-etching primer is good if it's fiberglass or if it has a finish on it already that's what you use the primer sealer for now, what I'm going to try to do, and I'm going to go back and forth over this, no point in letting the camera run. I want to go over and over this until the paper towels come out clean. Now, I know that this is going to take several, several times. I'm willing to spend 10, 15 minutes. Doesn't really matter. See, it is still coming out dirty. But to just keep doing this and have the, the patience to get this part of it right. Because once it's right... And you get that primer to stick real well and lay down, home free all. And so far, we have about a two hour window before it's supposed to rain. So Karen is monitoring that for me. And I'm real, I'm real excited about seeing two gold wheels. The wheel pretty well prepped. So one of the last things to do is, and I like to do this just to minimize the amount of schmutz that I have to clean off this at the end of a project. So this is always one of the choices. It keeps a lot of the, the paint dust, and it's important because if you get a lot of paint dust buildup on that, and you spray it on a windy day, sometime right in the middle of
Okay, the wheel is all prepped. We have that <laughs> turkey ready to put in the oven. And all it's left to do is shake up the can of primer and get priming. Now, this is the test. We're going to test self-etching primer. And we haven't had any fish eyes throughout this whole job because we've been real meticulous about prepping the parts. And, well, maybe we're just lucky. Now, at this point, if I were priming this and I see anything that even remotely looks like a fish eye or a spot that I'm not happy with, the thing is just to go get some acetone and some paper towels and wipe it right back down. And that usually cures the fish eye problem. But we haven't had it yet, so, but <laughs> you never know. The trick is I want to get two light coats on. I don't want to have one big drippy, glocky coat. I want two light coats, half an hour, 45 minutes apart. It's above freezing, so there should be no problem with this drying properly. Maybe it's our lucky day. Well, it definitely has the look of, it's going to rain any minute. Karen was right. Now, part of painting the spokes the way I'm doing, I go in one rotation. That usually exposes all the upper edges. Now I can go in a lower rotation. Or I can do it this way, just do the other side. Otherwise you don't get on an even coat. And the only thing to always be patient about, super patient, is not to try to get it on in one coat. And the only mistake you can make at this point is just to get carried away and try to do this all in one coat. And then you wind up, wind up having to wipe it off with acetone and start all over again. Not that I, ask me how I know that. All right, one side is basically done. I keep the wheel spinning for the whole amount of time. That seems to be, uh, in case we do have a place where it would run a run, well, it minimizes the chance that's gonna happen. It does look like we're going to be able to beat the weather here a little bit. I never want to say that out loud. Sorry. don't want to say that out loud, but... Uh... We would try to take advantage of every opportunity we can. And this, this time of year, you don't get every day. In fact, tomorrow, this rain is supposed to turn to snow, which means we'll be buffing forks out, or we'll be doing something else. We, uh, we always try to use that leapfrogging thing to our advantage. Now once that second coat starts to dry, you can see why it's worth putting in all that extra effort with the sandpaper and the grinding and with that wheel relative to a stock wheel that came with the motorcycle. I think this one's a lot nicer, and it'll be even nicer when it's painted gold. Well, in the course of this day, we got the two coats of primer on there. Now what I'll do is I'll let it sit under a heating vent overnight. We're not trying to use the primer like filler. If you were going to try to use it to cover big scratches and dents, this was sanded out enough that these two coats of primer should be it, but if we do see a flaw, Tomorrow, we can just touch it up with a little sandpaper and and then we'll be ready to paint gold tomorrow, assuming it doesn't snow. But we're always, because of leapfrogging, we're always trying to figure something out. And the thing we're trying to figure out is we always want something to do here. Something that's ready to buff. Something's ready. Well, we got the forks ready. So if it snows tomorrow, we'll buff out the forks and I'll try it. Maybe I'll even try that new pad. But anyway, what a day to get this to this point. Because this whole restoration, once these wheels are in gold and they're all ready to put back on the bike and all the little sub-assemblies are done, then the only thing left is the fuel tank. And that'll be the last part. And then we just start putting it back together part by part by part. So it'll be, no matter what, it's an exciting project to me. I hope you're enjoying watching it. Maybe even, maybe even pick up some good tips and good information, something you can use. Some of these Harbor Freight tools are really worthwhile for, for almost no money. And again, work on your project. Stay busy, especially if you're not 18 years old. You get to be about 30 and really old, better stay busy. Anyway, thanks for watching.